Here I am with my top 10 worst Sonic the Hedgehog characters. Now, I know pretty much everyone's going to disagree with me on number 10. I just never really liked this character that much. Now, after this, I was planning on doing my top 10 favorite Sonic females, like the females I like the most, or, or I might do a commentary on Danny XX39. Or another video. You'll just have to wait and see. But these are ten characters in the series that I just never really liked. So here we go. Remember, these are my opinions. I understand if you disagree. But anything above hatred will be deleted. Number ten is Metal Sonic. He's on this list because I would prefer him over any character on this list. But the reason he's on here, I find Metal Sonic very overrated. Because if you say one bad thing about him, then you get flame for it. Like, I'm sorry, but I just never cared for Metal Sonic. I kind of find him pointless. Sometimes. The, time, the thing I liked him the most was in Sonic Heroes. Because he was awesome in that game. Especially the final battle. But other than that, I really don't see the point in him. And, but, I, although I do like him as a villain, I just really don't like his character in general. He's okay as a villain, but his character in general just really sucks. And I just really don't like... He's okay design-wise, but other than that, I just don't really like Metal Sonic. I kind of, I just kind of find him pointless. That's why he's number 10. Number 9 is Charmy B. He's always been my least favorite of the Chaotix. Now, in Sonic Heroes, I found his, his voice was like really, really annoying. And to this day, I still think he's annoying. Even for Sonic Colors on the DS, I still think his voice is really annoying. Because he's just super hyperactive and he just bounces off the walls and he's always into stuff. And, and he's just like an annoying little kid. And just, uh, I really cannot stand Charmy. That's why, this is why he has the number 9 spot. Now, the number 8 spot, um, I'm pretty sure most of you were not expecting this character. I don't necessarily hate this character, but you're going to see why she's on here. Number 8 is Shara from Sonic and the Secret Rings. Now, I don't hate Shara. The reason she's on here is because she was just mainly just useless. Like, in Sonic, and she was also very annoying. Like, every second in the game, she's like, Sonic, watch out! Sonic, it's coming at us! Watch out! Be careful! She, uh, she was always, like, so paranoid. And she sounded like she's about to have a heart attack or something. And she just gave the most useless advice. She basically told you things you already knew. And she was basically useless. I mean, she really wasn't that big of a help in the game at all. And it always got annoying how every ten seconds she always said something. And like, even if you knew it was there, she would tell you, Oh, it's there, watch out, or something like that. Which got really annoying in the game. And I really wasn't a big on Sonic and the Secret Rings. But other than that, I don't hate Shara. I just find her I just found her a pointless character. I mean, what's the point of giving Sonic another love interest if she's only gonna be used once in the series? That's just wasteful. But other than that, Char is fine. Because I did like her personality. Because she was so sweet and nice and I did like that. But that's why she's on the number 8 spot. 
is because she was useless, pointless, and kind of annoying. Number seven is Wave the Swallow. I never liked this character. Wave is such a bitch. Be and not and mostly because of the way she hurt Tails' feelings in the first Sonic Riders. Which was an awesome game. I like that in Free Riders, but I hate Zero Gravity. Um, like, Wave just thinks she's better than everyone because she's smart. Like, okay, like, say she built something, and just one little thing was wrong in her programming, and someone, like, tells her that something's wrong with her invention, she gets mad, and then, like, takes it out on them and says it's their fault that it's broken. Like, she can't accept the fact that her own machines tear up on her and, 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 um, basically thrashes anyone who says that her, whatever she makes is wrong. Which is so stupid. She thinks she always has to be per perfect and all that stuff. And I think her voice is annoying too. I mean, her newer voice is better than her older one, but overall, I just really don't like Wave. I don't like her personality, I don't like her voice, and I just don't like her period. And if you're asking, Jed is on here, but Storm is not, but no, I don't like Storm either. Um, that's why she's number, well, let's go to Omachow. Now, Omachow is really annoying. Now, I know he's not as annoying now since he got his new voice, but I still find him annoying in general from his personality. He's just so hyper. Like, when he talks, he's like, Oh, I'm Omachow. Uh, I'm Om... And he's like, Greetings, everyone, and welcome. Like, he always talks like... Like, he's so excited and stuff like that just in like in a hyper tone and it's kind of annoying and I just find his personality in general to be really annoying I mean his new voice is still annoying but it's I will admit his voice has improved a whole lot I recommend Sega for giving him a new voice actor because he really needed it I'd probably say his worst voice was in Sonic Riders, the first one. And Sonic Heroes, it was terrible, too, on the tutorial. Which are actually two of my favorite games. So, yeah, that's why Omachow is on here. Here at, um, number five is Jet the Hawk. I hate Jet the Hawk, my least favorite member out of the Babylon Rogues. Jet is on here because he thinks he's all that, and even when he loses, he tries to... Uh, even when Jet loses to someone, he still tries to think he's better than them. Like, when he loses, he goes, You're just lucky, I'm still better than you. He starts throwing a fit and still acts like he's better than them when he loses. That's what, what is up with villains these days and trying to act like they're all tough even when they lose. I mean, it's just, it's just so annoying. And Jet, his new voice sounds so stupid. Both of his voices are really bad. And if you knew me, you know how much I hate this character. That's why he's number five. Number four is a character I'm sure everyone saw coming. Number four is Princess Elise. I hate her so much. What was the point of Elise, Sega? I mean, like I said with Shara, what, what's the point of giving Sonic another love interest, but only be used once? I mean, if you were really going to use all those romantic scenes, why not use it with Sonic and Amy? I mean, it would have actually made sense since they're both hedgehogs, 
and since they can actually get along from time to time again. Not just throwing in a random character for Sonic to have to risk his butt for. At least it's just pointless. In my opinion, she rips off Amy. She had the stupidest voice ever. Um, and Elise was just so useless. It got so annoying when you had to carry her from level in level to level. She did absolutely nothing until at the end, which was bestiality. And I just really cannot stand her. So, yeah, that's why she has the number four spot. Ugh, I just hate her. That's okay if you like her. I will accept it if you like the pairing, but other than that, no. But, number three is Big the Cat. Big the Cat is the most pointless character. What is the point of Big? Big is not even funny. Big is just retarded. He, all he does is walk around looking for a frog. Um, what does that have anything to do with the whole plot of Sonic? He just walks around hollering frog in a stupid, vo froggy in a stupid voice. And his voice is annoying as crap. He was, the games where he was most annoying in was Sonic Heroes and Sonic Adventure. He was okay in Sonic Chronicles, but other than that, Big is really stupid. And he's just dreadfully annoying. Now, here comes number two. I hate this next character with a passion. I've always hated this character, and I always will. But if you like this next character, I will respect it. Number two is Cream the Rabbit. Um, what is the point in her? Cream, the reason she's on here is because she's overrated. And because she's useless. I think she's overrated because she's only popular just because she's cute. That is so stupid to like a character for how they look. Like, look at all the Sonic characters. Like, take Blaze, for example. Blaze earned her popularity because of how... Because of how she was in Sonic Rush. Her gameplay to her personality and everything. It just wowed us. And that's how Blaze gets her popularity. And plus, she was like the only good thing about Sonic 06. I mean, stuff like that is what earns characters their popularity. And just think what Sonic's been doing over the years. But yet, Cream does absolutely nothing, and she only gets popular for being cute. That is so stupid. And another thing I hate her is because she's extremely useless. She does absolutely nothing in any of the games that she's in. Like, what's the point of her in the first place? Why does Amy even need a sidekick? It doesn't make any sense because Amy is supposed to be kind of like the damsel in distress and the love interest of Sonic. Then why does she need a sidekick just because Sonic has one? That is kind of dumb in my opinion. Because Cream never helps Amy out. The only thing she does is follow Amy around. The only time I actually liked her was Sonic Advance 2. Other than that, I think she's stupid. Her voice is also annoying. I will admit, her newer voice is much better than her older voice. But her newer voice is still annoying. But it's much better. And another thing is, she's a little crybaby. Every time they're in a battle, 
or something and they see a robot she's like oh my gosh that robot is mean please be nice mr robot i mean she expects everything to be nice it's so annoying I mean, while they're all sitting there having a big battle and stuff, she just sits there and cries just because the enemies are bad. That is so retarded. And that stuff just really gets on my nerves. She really needs to stop telling the enemies to be bad. And the thing where she uses cheese as a weapon is so stupid. I mean, she doesn't do anything at all. She's completely worthless to the plot. And stuff. And she really doesn't do anything to help out the characters at all. She just whines about everything. That is why I despise Cream so much. And I pretty much always will. That is why she's number two. My number one worst Sonic character of all time is Dr. Eggman. I don't see why people like... I mean, if you do like Eggman, that's fine. But I think... It, but certain people who like him because he has to be in the series, that's a stupid reason for liking him. And also liking him because you think he's funny. Villains are supposed to be serious, devastating, horrifying killers. They're not supposed because when and they're also supposed to give heroes a hard time and a run for their money. They're not supposed to be silly or anything like that because then it makes them look stupid. Eggman is so stupid. He is so, his inventions are uncreative because he repeats the same ideas. Like in Sonic 4 and in Sonic Advanced, he used that little wrecking ball thing from the first game. What's the point of using the same ideas over again? And in Sonic Advance, he used that little hammer car in the first level. He also did the same thing in Sonic Advance 2. And they were both the same thing. So exactly what is the point of him using the same ideas? His voice is really annoying to me. And it gets so annoying every time you fight him. And he repeats the same words. Like in Sonic Adventure, he goes, Get a load of this. Get a load of this. That is so annoying. And his inventions are just very uncreative. Because like, like say he'll build a big battleship. All Sonic has to do is like smash through it and it breaks so easily. The things he designs are cheap. Because Sonic and them just easily smash through it. And it never, and it, without any defenses or anything. I mean, why does he keep making machines that are so poorly designed and that break, and that smash so easily with just a simple attack? And it's so stupid how he creates enemies out of baby animals. And that, that is so dumb. Because all of his enemies really don't do anything. All they do is stand there. Most of the time. There's only been a few good enemies, but other than that, no. And it's so stupid how he got tricked by one of his own robots. Like, he got tricked by Metal Sonic and Sonic Heroes. And he's been tricked by Rouge the Bat like three times. So that's supposed, if he's so smart, then why does he get tricked that easily? I still have more reasons for hating Eggman, but, it, but since the time limit's almost up, I'm going to stop here. This has been Cole Langley 1, and I'll see you on the next video.
Hey guys, this is my new top 10 list in a very, very long time. I'm making a revised version of my top 10 most hated Sonic characters. I know I made one back in, I think it was like January or so, somewhere around there. And I decided to revise it because looking back at it, I didn't really think it was good. And most of the points I made were just out of pure anger. So, I've decided to remake this list over. Now, remember, people, these are my opinions. If you like any of the characters on this list, I respect all opinions. But, please, people, no getting but her and any comments saying, Oh, how dare you hate this character or something, will be deleted the minute I see them. And I know that sounds harsh, but... You'll see what I mean when I go to certain characters on this list. I've actually switched characters around and stuff like that. Now, I know this list is long, but bear with me. I've added different effects and stuff like that. So, shall we start this top 10 list off with my number 10 worst Sonic character? <clears throat> okay, number 10, folks. Charmy B. The reason I put Charmy B at the number 10 spot is because he just never knows when to shut the fuck up. I mean, he serves no purpose to Team Chaotix. He serves no purpose as a detective. He's just reckless, disruptive. He's just someone you would not want working with you. And he's just also one of those people that tries to act like he's, a, like he's something when in reality he's nothing. So to summon up Charmy, he's useless, annoying, I can't stand his personality, and he just can't shut up or sit down for two seconds without him messing into everything. So... Uh, Charmy is, that's Charmy B at number 10, a useless, a useless character. Okay, here we are coming up on number 9. Number 9 is Metal Sonic. Now before you all start going into a rage fit, no, I don't like Metal Sonic. I used, I did like him like in the Sonic OVA movie and in a few of the classic games. But other than that, Metal Sonic just seems like a lazy villain in my opinion. I mean, his design and stuff is okay. I just don't see the point in him most of the time. I mean, like in Sonic Heroes, he was a lazy villain. Just, I just don't think he lives up to his potential like he used to be. Like he used to be, you know, that killing machine, but I just don't see it anymore. I just see him as a lazy bad guy. I mean, the last time I've seen him was like in Free Riders. And I guess he did portray somewhat of an evil purpose in that game. But even then... I'm just basically think he's just an overall lazy villain. I don't like Metal Sonic. I, I don't know. I've just never liked him in the 3D era. I just kind of find him rather pointless to the storyline. Although he does make a better villain than Dr. Eggman. He just doesn't summon up the potential of a bad that I want a bad guy to be. I liked him back in the older days, especially in the Sonic OVA movie, he was kick-ass, I loved him. Um, I loved him in Sonic CD, even though he was pathetically easy to beat. So, yeah, that's Metal Sonic at number 9. Just a lazy, lazy Sonic villain. Coming up at number 8, <clears throat> oh god. Number eight is Wave the Swallow. Where do I begin? Wave the Swallow is just a bitch. I never liked this character whatsoever. In my opinion, she is a ripoff of Tails. She is just one of those immature teenagers that's like, just because she is smarter than everyone else, she 
doesn't think like she has to make any mistakes. Anytime something of hers that she makes gets broken or is not used properly or something goes wrong, she blames everyone else for her mistakes because she thinks she's too smart to make a mistake. It's like, come on, Wave, just because you're a techno genius doesn't mean you can't make mistakes or have flaws in your programming. She thinks she just has to be little Little Miss Perfect about everything. And I just really hate her. Not only that, but I hate her personality and how she tries to take charge of everyone else. And how she's just a smart mouth girl who I think so someone should just smack her ass or something. Just, ugh. And sh in my opinion, the Babylon Rogues were just lazy characters because. They, in my opinion, they just rip off Team Sonic. I really don't like Wave the Swallow because she is a major bitch and she just thinks she's a know-it-all. So that's Wave the Swallow at number 8. <clears throat> okay, coming up at number 7. Number 7 is Jet the Hawk. Jet the Hawk is such a snob. I mean, he literally thinks that he's just better than Sonic. That's pretty much his whole purpose for being in the Sonic franchise, is him thinking he's better than Sonic. Just, just because he can ride a hoverboard and just because he knows the skills on it. It's like, so Silver has telekinesis and Shadow the Hedgehog can ride guns, has guns and moto and mo rides motorcycles, but you don't hear him complaining. Not only that, but Jet is also a freaking stuck-up loser. Every time he loses, he still tries to act like he's the best in every way. And not only that, even when Jet gets his face punched in, he still, like, nothing he, like, nothing no one does will make him admit that he is the loser that he truly is. It's just Jet will not accept defeat. I mean, now I do like an enemy with potential, but Jet is just, ugh. And not to mention his voice. Both his four kids and his new voice. Jet just sounds like a fucking parrot. His four kids' voice sounded awful. His new voice sounds even more retarded, but a little bit better than before. But to basically summon up Jet, in my opinion, he's just one of those immature punks that tries to make everyone feel like crap. He tries to make himself feel like he's above everyone else when you know he's just one of those losers who just turns out to be one of those losers in the end. And I just don't like Jet. He's just a worse disgrace as a Sonic rival and he's just not what I expect a rival to be. He's just a little punk ass. That's all I can say. So yeah, Jet the Hawk. At number seven. S yeah, Jet the Hawk at number seven. Number six. Oh, God. Number six is Shara the Genie. Oh, my God. Sonic and the Secret Rings was already bad enough to play through. But with Shara, on the other hand, Shara just fails to shut the fuck up and making the levels even more annoying. Like, Shara's advice just literally sucks, and she constantly nags all the time throughout the whole entire game. Her advice is just useless. And not to mention, Shara cannot even grant you a simple wish. How pathetic is that? What good is a genie if she can't even grant a wish? And... Going through the whole entire game, Shara doesn't even help you on the boss fights. She doesn't even help you when you're stuck in dangerous areas. At least Navi from The Legend of Zelda gave you hints on where to go and told you where to go or where if you were stuck in a dungeon, she would at least give you a reminder on what to do. But Shara just points out the obvious. And 
what makes it worse is her freaking annoying voice that you have to listen to throughout the whole entire game. It's just, if you're going to play Secret Rings, my suggestion is just play it for the party mode. Because I enjoyed the party mode better than the story mode. Then have... B so to basically summon up Shara, she's a useless character. She never helps you whatsoever. And she just constantly nags and complains throughout the whole entire game. And I just really hate this character as much as any, everyone else does. So yeah, Shar the Genie, number six. Number five. N who can be worse than Shar the Genie? Well, Princess Elise. Oh my God, I hated her so much in Sonic the Hedgehog 06. Granted, I don't have that much to say about her, but Elise just really pissed me off so bad in that game. Not, she is responsible for one of the worst scenes in Sonic the Hedgehog history. The scene where she cut kisses Sonic had to be one of the worst. Not to mention, the force fields that she uses makes no sense whatsoever. And the whole fact that um, the, where Silver goes back in time to sa save her, she doesn't even recognize him, even when he goes through time and sees her as a little kid and saves her out of that place. It made no sense whatsoever. Elise just made, her character just made no sense whatsoever. That's pretty much all I'm going to say on Elise. I could just go on for hours about her. Okay, number four. Number four is Cream the Rabbit. I'm sorry, I just hate this character. For one reason. I cannot stand this character's fan base. The fans get so butthurt. Anytime someone gives their opinion on her or does a video, they'll get so butthurt and defensive just because someone says she's useless. I mean, honestly, people, what purpose does she serve in the Sonic games? None whatsoever. Sonic Advance 2 and 3, I'll admit, she was a good character. I liked her when starting out, but in the games after that, no. She just, I just don't like her character. She is useless, she is whiny, I can't stand her fan base because the fans of this character constantly get butt hurt when someone calls her useless or something like that. And not to mention, what purpose does she serve in the plot? Like, all she is, she's just more of a fan than a character. She's just a character that just sits behind the sidelines and cheers for the other characters while the other characters are doing the action. And another thing I can't stand about characters like this is that she gets so much credit for doing absolutely nothing but only because of how she looks. There is more to a character than just their looks. Now I'm not saying everyone likes her for that exact same reason reason but for the people that do you really got to look to more into a character than just their looks because there's more to what makes a character so and pretty much without cheese she's screwed like she's even proven that before without cheese she has basically no method of attack and I just don't see what, and the whole fact that people love to bring up the excuse of her fighting Emeril and Sonic X really isn't much of a valid point. Because compare that to all the other episodes of Sonic X, and you'll see that really isn't much of anything. So to summon her up, she's a useless character. I cannot stand her, and I can't stand her fan base. But if you like the character, that's your own opinion. I just don't like her, and I never will. So, that's why she's at number four. Okay, number three. Number three, I'm sure most of people will agree with me. Omo Chow. 
honestly, what is the point of Omochao? Omochao has to be one of the most pointless characters in a video game that I've ever seen. Omochao... Omo Chow's advice, just like Shara's, is useless. Thank God in certain games like in Sonic Riders and in Sonic Generations, you have the option to turn him off. But when you don't, what is the point of him when you're just walking around through the level, he comes out out of nowhere just to tell you something that is freaking obvious right in front of your face. Plus, in the game Sonic Heroes, I know people say you're forced to play the tutorial, but you're actually not. So, I'm not going to bring that up, because you're actually not forced to play the tutorial stage. But, when you do, what is the point of even him even explaining anything? When you can, I mean, sure it's optional what team you pick, but like, if you start out the game with Team Sonic or any of the other teams besides Team Rose, and you know how the game works, what is the point of him even teaching you how to play the game if you already know from playing the other two, three, other three teams? It makes no sense whatsoever. So, to sum it up, Omo Chow, he's a useless character. I cannot stand his voice. He serves no helpful purpose in the Sonic game. And he just points out things that is just obvious that no one even needs to know. Instead of the actual real things like, oh, how to get out of the place or how to find this thing or that thing. Yeah. Number two. Number two is Big the Cat. I'm pretty sure everyone will agree with me on this one. Big the Cat has to be one of the worst Sonic characters ever created. Now, for those of you who like Big the Cat, that's fine. But the fact that him, people like him because, you know, he searches for his best friend Froggy... I kind of find that all in matter pointless because honestly, what does Big or the Frog itself serve any purpose in the Sonic fan in the Sonic games? Sure, in Sonic Adventure, the Frog swallows a Chaos Emerald, but he was just doing it to save the Frog. He wasn't doing it because he fit in the story. So the whole fact that even though he does try to rescue his best friend Froggy, the whole point of him trying to save it in general is pointless because it doesn't help him accomplish anything. Sure, it does make him a good friend by rescuing it, and it does show the that you know. Um, the bravery and stuff like that of his character, but I honestly still don't see what is the point in him saving the frog other than just him rescuing it. I mean, his character really has nothing to do with the actual story. I mean, sure, he's best friends with Cream and Amy, but, like, Cream and Amy are better characters than Big the Cat is. I mean... Like, in the only game I actually saw Big having a purpose in is Sonic Chronicles, because at least he was doing more than just searching for the frog and actually doing, wanting to go on the actual adventure. So, basically, Big's point of view, he's just an overall pointless character. I absolutely cannot stand his voice. His character overall is really annoying, stupid, and pointless. And the whole fact behind him and the frog in general is pointless because honestly what does the frog have anything to do with collecting chaos emeralds stopping dr eggman or another evil at hand or anything like that i mean big should just be one of those characters that is a party character and nothing else because Honestly, I think Big should just be a party character because he really serves no purpose in the main story and 
I don't really see what his purpose is in being here in the first place. I'm sorry if you like Big the Cat for that reason. I just think it's pointless. I mean, sure, he does fight for his friend. And that's why most people think he's a good character. But when you really look at it, that's pretty much all he needs to wants to fight for. I mean... And basically, from my point, all I'm trying to say, Big the Cat is a pointless character. That's all that needs to be said. My number one most hated Sonic character in the Sonic franchise is Dr. Eggman. Now, I hate Dr. I used to like the classic Eggman because, you know, he had a good sense of humor to him and it was always something new at the end. But... Sonic Adventure 2 Battle had the last good, uh, hang on, had the last good Eggman. Or right, hang on, because um, after Sonic Adventure 2, Eggman became such a lazy villain. He constantly repeats the same ideas. Um, he use and he even uses the same ideas in the exact same game, which just really. Sh and him using the same ideas really just shows poor character development. Not to mention his character is just flat out dumb. Like, like he's just not creative anymore. Sure, they've added that comic relief style thing to him. But honestly, I just don't think it works with him. I mean, sure, I do like a comical villain, but I also like one who's serious and knows what the heck he's doing while he's being comical at the same time. I mean, Dr. Eggman is just retarded. He constantly gets tricked by the same enemies, not to mention he got tricked by his own creation, Metal Sonic, twice may I add he's been tricked by Rouge the Bat like three times um like in Sonic Heroes he was just lazy because he used the same bosses throughout the entire game the Sonic Advance series he just uses the same boss he did in the previous levels or in past Sonic games I mean the only good 3D Sonic Egg the 3D Sonic game Eggman was good in was in Sonic Chronicles because he actually took over Metropolis. So, I'll give him credit in Sonic Chronicles. He was a good character because he took over Metropolis. But, other than that, Eggman is just a lazy villain. Him constantly using the same ideas shows poor character development. I really, really do not like him. His voice is annoying because he sounds like a cranky old man that hasn't slept in six days. His ideas are just repetitive. His whole point in trying to kill Sonic is repetitive and just boring. He, and he... And it just seems like he wants to hurt Sonic rather than kill him. Because just look at the facts. In the 3D games, he's helped Sonic more than he's tried to kill him. I understand him trying to team up with the bad guys to take out a greater source of evil. Because the evil wants to destroy everything. But doing it over and over out of desperation is just pathetic. I mean, I can understand once or twice, but Eggman is that desperate enough to get them to help him every time. That is just lazy, pathetic, and just plain dumb. His ideas are just so dumb that I can't even laugh, <clears throat> that it can't even make me chuckle. Like, I have to chuckle sarcastically just to actually go along with what he's doing. I mean, just to sum it up, Eggman, he's lazy, his inv ideas are pointless and stupid, and he's just an overall lazy villain, and his character is just dead now. So, this has been my top 10 worst Sonic the Hedgehog characters. Top your list down below, whichever ones you want to... Whichever characters you think are the worst. And no typing in, oh, well, this character is the worst because of this and this. Or why isn't this character on the list? Because everyone has an opinion. 
So, I will see you all on my next video, which will be the best list. See ya. Hey, welcome to my top 10 worst or most hated m characters in the Mario series. I'm sorry I haven't made a video in a while. I've been busy. So, I guess I've decided to stop out my videos with top 10 list then once I do the top 10 list I'll be doing commentaries and rants again so yeah after this I will be doing my top 10 favorite characters in the Mario series well these are ones that I just find annoying or really really irritates me now if you want to know Toad is not on here but I don't, I'm kind of mixed with Toad. He can be annoying, but there are also moments where I enjoy using him. But anyways, let's get on with the list. Now remember, these are my opinions, so no bitching about it. Okay, here we are, we have, and some of the characters have been switched around since the last list. We have the PD Piranha. Now, I really don't like the Petey Piranha for a couple of reasons. I just really don't like it being as an active character. It's nice that it's the only Piranha Plant as an active character, but I just feel it's re it's really annoying, and just um, and because it's so overpowered in some of the spin-off games, it makes it very annoying. And I just don't really care much for this character. I really think it's unoriginal because it's basically just one of the piranha plants except it has feet. I mean, I just kind of find that really dumb. Now, in Super Mario Sunshine, I guess he was portrayed well, even though he was only shown twice in that entire game. But other than that, I really don't like him all that much. So, yeah, that's why he's at the bottom of this list. Here we are, we have the Thwomps. I'm sure everyone pretty much thinks these guys are annoying. I've never liked the Thwomps. They're always stuck in areas that are so crowded. And when you jump sometimes you're pretty much either gonna have to jump over them or on them or whatever they're just always in the tightest places getting struck right by them is a real pain in the butt and they're just really annoying now on some pathways you can just zoom across them other than doing that sometimes during in the middle of some platforming they can be really annoying so that's why I have the thwomps placed on this list and I don't like how they're portrayed some of the times and I just kinda feel they're just there as just just to be there now we have the Hammer Brothers. As I said on my last list, I really don't like these guys. They are so annoying. <clears throat> this one, this category also falls in to the topic of the Ice, Fire, and Boomerang Brothers. The Ice ones were in New Super Mario Brothers Wii. I really didn't see the point of making another one when the other three are already a-holes to begin with. Everyone pretty much knows the Hammer Brothers are extremely annoying. The only game I felt they were portrayed well was in Mario Strikers and Strikers Charged. They were really good in that game. But and I just feel they're really annoying. Like they they're the way they use their hammers and the way they can s jump off and on platforms can be kind of tricky at some points. And it's all about timing with these guys when you have to jump over them. Now, at points it can be easy, but when you're in a tight area and you have to get over to the next place or there's another platform and they're on top of it, 
or if they're on top of another platform that you're below, that can get really annoying. Not to mention in Paper Mario the 64, it pissed me off when they threw multiple hammers and shrunk you. Now we have Bowser Jr. I'm sorry to anyone who likes him, but I don't really like Bowser Jr. that much. I don't like any of Bowser's kids, and I don't like Bowser either. I'm sorry, but some of the characters on Mario really piss me off because of their actions and what they do. Bowser Jr. I really don't see as original. I mean, he's just a smaller version of Bowser. I mean, at least with the other Koopalings, they have different designs to them and stuff like that and they have different things to them but he just looks like but Bowser Jr. just looks like a smaller version of Bowser for one Bowser Jr. tries to act like something he's not he tries to act too grown up he thinks he's scary and he's not all he is is a spoiled little crybaby he's so he's spoiled and he's a little crybaby because he throws us a fit when he doesn't get his way. I don't like how he's being used sometimes. Like in the newer game, like in one of the newer games, how he's used to kidnap Peach instead of Bowser. I mean, really, Bowser should get off his butt and stop having his son do his crap for him. Bowser Jr., I just feel, is annoying and I really don't see the point in him most of the time. I did like how he was portrayed in Super Mario Sunshine, though. Although it really was unexpected because no one, no one would have ever thought Bowser had a son in that game. Which I think that was his first game. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But I just don't like Bowser Jr. And I don't like any of the Koopa kids. They are just really annoying. I hate them all. And that is why I placed them at the spot of this list. And I just hate his attitude. The only game he was good in was Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. But anyways, the Bullet Bills. If I had to choose any enemy, I'd say these guys are annoying. Because, like, if you're running through an area and you're surrounded by bullet bill cannons, you better be prepared. I hate it when they're stuck in tight areas where they shoot in from above you, below you, or even in front of you. Areas like that can get very annoying, <clears throat> and especially when they sh zoom out just like that. And I hate how they're so... they come like un like in the original games how they always came and those levels when you had to hop on those mushrooms and stuff those can get very annoying sometimes and I just think the bullet bills get stuck in areas that just that areas that just kind of mess up your whole gameplay they just mess up your whole gameplay on certain aspects of the level <clears throat> and I just feel that their presence is just annoying overall and every game they appeared in I just really didn't have it like them because I don't like the way they're used I don't like the areas they get put into when they're used and overall I just don't like them they're just plain annoying but anyways, let's. This one is shared by two spots, Wario and Waluigi. I don't see the point in these two. They're just clones and ripoffs of Mario and Luigi. I mean, Wario and Waluigi. There, there's. There's basically hardly any difference from them. I mean, sure, they look differently, but they kind of have the same aspect as the two. I mean, they're both black like, brothers, and they both have the same name, except both of their names are flipped from Mario and Luigi. 
I find both of these guys annoying and stupid. Like every time in the opening of a sports themed Mario game, they just do some of the stupidest stuff to try to cheat their way in to make them think that they're better than all the other characters playing sports. Now, I do like the openings, but when it shows them doing something stupid, it's not funny. All they do is try to make their look better than the others and fail miserably. They're just rip-offs of Mario and Luigi. I mean, like, I mean, when Wario first appeared, I actually thought he was going to be a really funny bad guy, but then when they brought in Waluigi, I'm like, okay, they're basically the same thing as the other two, and I really don't see them being rivals of Mario and Luigi when they already have Bowser and the other Koopa kids. I mean, Bowser's Mario and Luigi's arch-rival. So, and he's also their enemy, so I really don't see the point in these two. I mean, they don't really play a part in the main Mario storyline, just the spin-off games. And even then, I think both of them suck. I don't like the way they're used, I don't like their special moves, as computers they're annoying, and they're <coughs> a-holes, and I just don't like them. I've never liked either one of them. Waluigi, I would have to say, is more annoying than Wario, though. I just can't stand either one of them. Even just looking at them sometimes just irritates me and I just don't like the way they're portrayed so yeah that's why they're on here number I think this is three is Birdo I mean no four is Birdo I've never liked Birdo now I know Birdo appeared before Yoshi but I just don't like how she has the same abilities as him she's just not she when Yoshi uses his abilities, I kind of find them more unique and and fits in with the gameplay well. But Birdo, I just feel she is kind of rushed when her abilities are in there. I just don't like Birdo. The sounds that she makes is annoying. The two times that she's talked in the series, which was Mario Tennis for the 64 and Mo Super Mario 2 for the Game Boy Advance, both of her voices were annoying <clears throat> in both games. The sound she makes is retarded. Birdo is an overall stupid character. She really makes me mad. I don't like the way she's used. I don't like her as a computer player. And I just don't overall like the whole aspect of her. And, I mean, if she was portrayed more as a series villain, she I guess she would be okay, but I just feel like in the spin-off games that she's just one of the worst characters. She doesn't have that much power or offensive skill or whatever the g type of game it is to even back up her advantages. And I just don't like Birdo. She really annoys me. <clears throat> so, yeah. Number three, yeah, is the Lucky Two. I'm pretty sure everyone's going to agree on this. Now, I don't mind them being the um, race racer starter people in the Mario Kart games, but <clears throat> daily they're just annoying. I really hate it when they throw them stupid spinies and you're in the middle of some platforming and they always throw it in the worst place possible and it ruins your whole platforming and running style in the game.
And most of the time, they even crowd up against you, and they're just annoying. And the fact they can come back when you hit them is just retarded and annoying. I really don't see the point. Why, do, For one, why do they come back to life when you hit them? It doesn't make any sense. At least with the dry bones, it makes some sense, seeing how they're already dead. But with them, I just don't see the point in it. And they're just really annoying. Number two, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but Bowser. I've never liked Bowser, except the only time I liked him was in Mario RPG. Other than that, I'm sorry, I really don't like Bowser. I think he's the most overrated character in the series. I really don't like how some only like him for how he looks. I think liking a character for how they look is stupid because that's not really explaining their full aspects and potentials of them. That's just explaining on how they look. I think Bowser is annoying, he's an a-hole, he pees me off, and I'm gonna, I'm going into depth, okay. I really don't like Bowser's personality. He just thinks he's all that, and he thinks he's all big and bad just because he's bigger than everyone else. And every time he finds certain items or certain elements that help him in whatever plot he's using, he just tries to use that as if he's better than everyone in the mushroom kingdom and it just makes him feel like an asshole to me and not to mention the only skill he basically does is breathe fire I mean that's only basic skill I've ever seen him do like in the Paper Mario series he's annoying in the second one he was pointless because he had nothing to do with the plot the third one he was the worst character because his maneuvering the way he maneuvers was crappy he had no defense to back himself up and his attack was higher that was pretty much the only good thing about him and I just don't like him. And he also throws a fit when he loses to Mario. Like, he always acts like a big baby and a kind of a bitch when he loses to Mario. He is dreadfully annoying to fight. Every time I fought, and most of the time I fight him, he's just a big disappointment. In Super Mario 64, he was easy. Mario Sunshine, he was a disappointment. Um, um, let's see. Super Paper Mario, I didn't really care using him, only to light torches or something. And even in the spin-offs, I don't like how he's used. Because he's so annoying as a computer player. He has the most annoying abilities ever. And I just I just don't like the way he's portrayed. I'm not saying he shouldn't be the villain. Because he's okay as the villain. I just don't like his... I just don't think he has good potential. And I just don't like his personality. He always tries to act and always tries to push himself like he's better than the other characters. But in my opinion, he just fails at it miserably. And he just can't get the fact that Peach doesn't like him. And no matter what, that Mario's going to stop him no matter what he does. I even think in Mario Galaxy he's annoying. And Mario Galaxy and Galaxy 2 are my favorite Mario games. I'm sorry, but those games are just magnificent. But anyways, I'm sorry to anyone who likes Bowser. I just can't stand his ass. He really makes me mad. Most of the time he's just easy as crap. I really didn't find him much of a challenge in any of the original games. Like in Mario 3, you didn't even have to attack him, which was kind of dumb. In Mario World, he was easier 
than he was in the other games. Maury, and I don't know why some people think he's hard in 64. I really didn't find him much of a challenge. True, the third battle has some hard aspects, but once you find your way around them, it's not really that much of a challenge. And yes, I have beaten that whole game before. I even think Bowser is annoying in Smash Brothers because he spams too many moves and he's just annoying as a computer player. And I just don't like Bowser and he just really doesn't have that many skills to back himself up. And he's just an overall coward. So anyways, the number one most annoying Mario character to me is the Magikoopas. I hate assist enemies, and that's what these guys are. All these things do <clears throat> is power up Bowser and the Koopa Kids and make them bigger a-holes than what they are to, well, to me, that is. And they just use magic to be very annoying. And I've always noticed this, but why the heck does their magic look like tic-tac-toe? I mean, like, sometimes when I've seen them being used, they just shoot out shapes out of their wands. I kind of find that really stupid and weird. And I just don't like the fact that they constantly heal the enemies. They constantly make the battlefields rather difficult, even though I do like a challenge. So I'm not going to complain too much on that. Um, I just don't like assist enemies. And in certain games where they're used as healers or even power-ups for the enemies, I just think that it's really annoying. And I just never like them in any of the games. And I don't like the way they're portrayed either. So this has been my list of my most annoying Mario characters. Stay tuned for my favorite Mario characters and other top 10 lists, along with some rants and commentaries. This is Ko Langley One, and I'll see you all. Ko Langley One again with my top 10 favorite Sonic the Hedgehog characters list. <clears throat> now my time limit is longer because now, um, I can actually have more than 15 minutes on YouTube. It's a new thing for certain users. But anyways, um, my top 10 list is very long as you can see because I have a lot of things to say. When I do top 10 lists, some of them will be this long and some of them will be like maybe 10, up to 10 minutes or something. But, these are just the 10 characters that I like in the series. Um, I like a couple of more, but after, but basically this is just about it. Now remember, these are my opinions. If you disagree, that's fine. Any hate comments will be deleted. Number 10 is Vector the Crocodile. Now, I like Espio, and I really hate Charmy, but... I really find SBO a really cool character. I love his personality and he has always been my favorite member out of the Chaotix. The only thing I can't stand is his voice. He just, I'm sorry but his voice is just retarded. Like his new voice sounds just as bad well sounds a little bit better than the old one but it still sounds pretty stupid. But, yeah, other than that, no. But, he, I really love his personality, and he's just so funny, and I always love it how he has these schemes, you know, like to get rich, and stuff like that. It's just so funny. And I like how he's willing to do anything to get his hands on money. I really like that about him. So, yeah, number nine is Omega. I don't have much to say on Omega because he really hasn't appeared in that many games. But the four games he's been in, I really like him a lot. I, I love his, I love how he's created. 
He has a, Sega did a very good job with Omega's design. It's very creative. And I'm glad he got, I'm glad he sounds like a robot now. Because I heard his new voice on Sonic Colors for the DS, and he actually sounds like a robot now. Which is a good thing. Because he sounded so retarded in 06, well, which I hated that game. But Omega is just a very creative, very unique robot. I love the many textures and features and stuff about him. And I always love how he goes out and tries to hunt Eggman down and tries to do anything he can to destroy Eggman and his army. I admire that determination out of him. And I don't blame him either. But yeah, that's why he's number 9. Number 8, Silver the Hedgehog. I know a lot of people were expecting to you all to see Silver higher on the list. But I put Silver on here. No, I mean, it's not because I don't ha like him. Because I love Silver. Silver is awesome. I mostly like him because of his personality. He's willing to do anything to save the fe future. Uh, even if that means killing somebody. And I really like how he's more different than the other hedgehogs. Where how he doesn't focus so much on speed. He's more power and, and gameplay wise... Uh, it's okay, but he's just really fun to play as, and I find his gameplay style more unique since of his telekinetic powers, and I do like his newer voice better now, and Silver just rocks, and I think he should really get his own game. Because I think he's in a position right now where he actually deserves his own game. Well, a guy can dream, but anyways. Number seven is Shadow. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be mad because I didn't put him higher, but I just never found Shadow to be the best character in the series. I kind of find Shadow overrated. That's why he's low, because... I mean, most people only like him because of how he looks, and I think that's dumb, but I mostly like Shadow because of his personality, like, he's just badass, like, he don't care about anything, and he shows no mercy to anyone who's in his way. I think that's really cool about him, and, and he will not go down without a fight, he cannot accept defeat. And I kind of like that about him, too. I really like his determination. And I just like... I just like the unique... The unique way... What am I trying to say? Basically, I like his unique textures as well as Omega's. He's just a very unique, very creative character. And I really want to see him in the games. And I really enjoy playing as him. But, I'm sorry people, I don't find him the best character, but Shadow is still awesome. Now we have Rouge the Bat. Now, uh, people are going to be mad because I put Rouge higher than Shadow, but I really like Rouge a lot. She has always been my favorite since she first came out. NSA 2. Rouge has many reasons to be one of my favorite characters. She's smart. She always knows exactly what to do. She never lets anyone get in her way. And and she doesn't take anyone's crap. And she is one of the best characters that they've ever made. And Rouge is really... Um, she is really resourceful and... She's kind of like a bad girl with good intentions. Sometimes she actually does try to do the right thing, but sometimes she's just in it for the cash. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong with that. I actually like that about Rouge. And she's also really funny as well. 
I did like her a lot in Sonic Free Riders because I thought she was really enjoyable and I just really enjoy the many things that she has to come to us. Like her treasure hunting abilities to her fighting skills and I just love that stuff about Rouge. And because I really expect to see that out of a, uh, out of a lot of women. So, yeah, that's why Rouge is number six. Number five, and my second favorite female, Blaze the Cat. Now, I like Blaze more than Rouge. It was really hard for me to decide between the two. I know the last time I said I liked Blaze, I mean, not Blaze, but Rouge more than Blaze, but I actually find Blaze cooler. She's just so majestic, and she's really fun to play as, and... When you first play as her and you see her in the games, she's just the kind of character you can really enjoy. And she's very interesting to learn about. And she's very interesting to learn about and to use. And she just has very many unique features that just make her an awesome character. She's as fast as Sonic. She's as powerful as Knuckles. I mean, just think about all this stuff. She stands out, to me, she stands out on, amongst all the Sonic females. But she is not my favorite. My favorite female will be coming up here momentarily. Not, um, but yeah, Blaze the Cat is just awesome. I mostly like her for her personality. She never lets no one stand in her way. She just, she just does anything she can to protect anybody, her people and her friends. And I just, I, that's just one of the many things I like about Blaze the Cat. And I hope I see that, and I hope I keep seeing that in the next games that she's in. So yeah, that's why she's on my number five. Number four is Knuckles the Echidna. You're looking at a big Knuckles fan right here. In the original games, he was like my absolute favorite next to Tails. I played as both of them non-stop in Sonic 3. I used Sonic as well, but Knuckles had a more interesting gameplay. With him climbing, using his fist to climb walls and stuff, I kind of really thought it made that really unique. He was just a very interesting character to learn about and to use in the games like in Sonic 3 and stuff like that he was also um my favorite character to play as in Sonic Adventure the first one um i just i just really like knuckles a lot and i i love him and i love his determination too and knuckles just knuckles is just, just awesome he always comes up with, like, the coolest lines ever as well. Like, he, like when he says something at the right moment, it comes out just perfectly. I know that didn't make sense, but I know where you think that's coming from. But Knuckles the Echidna is awesome. Number three is Sonic the Hedgehog. Obviously, if you're going to make a top ten list, Sonic has to be on the list. Sonic has many reasons. Because Sonic is fast and he's basically the whole franchise. Sonic is just such a heartwarming character and he just has many things that I admire from him ever since he first came out. And I know he will continue to do all these wonderful things and from now until the day the Hedgehog finally ends. I love his personality. I love how he's a real go-getter and he's always willing to do what's right. And he's a real strong fighter and he never backs down or goes down without a fight. He never lets danger or anything hold him back. Once he sees someone in danger, he just goes after him. He just goes. So, I really love this hedgehog a lot. Sonic, well, he's pretty much been my, one of my favorite characters in the whole series, without a doubt. 
Um, but yeah, like Knuckles and Tails, I really enjoyed him a lot as well. Believe it or not, he was like my second favorite character to play as in SA2, which was still my favorite Sonic game. Until I played Sonic Colors, Sonic Colors comes close to that. But, yeah, Sonic is just amazing. And I want to see him, I want to, uh, I just will hope he keeps doing what he does in the next games. Number two, I know a lot of people are going to get mad about this, but number two, and my favorite Sonic the Hedgehog female, Amy Rose the Hedgehog. I don't care what anyone says. People are going to be mad because I probably put her higher than Sonic, but I've always loved Amy Rose. She is like, her and my number one character were really hard decisions because it took me at least almost an hour to decide these, her and my number one. I absolutely adore Amy Rose. I really love her personality, how she's always so sweet, and how she's just always such a, she's just such a heartwarming character to me. And I really love her Pico Pico Hammer because it makes her gameplay more unique in my opinion. And she just has really... I just kind of find her kind of more unique than some characters in the series. And there's just something about Amy that I just love. And... I really like it how she just keeps going. And she never gives up until she gets what she wants. She even fights to get what she wants, which is mostly Sonic. Like, she even proves herself to be... Like, when she's in a battle, she'll prove herself to be as strong as she can be just to please Sonic. I really find that very, very... I really find that to be very, very you know, just good, because she's willing to do all that just to be his girlfriend, and I kind of find that very respectful, and she is really funny, too. I actually think Amy's kind of a funny character. The only thing I don't like is her new voice. I kind of like Lisa Ortiz better as Amy, but oh well. But I really find Amy, she's really enjoyable to play as. And I really hope in the upcoming Sonic games that she's playable again. Because she's really fun to play as. I enjoy using her. And she's just very interesting. And I just really love this character a lot. So yeah, that's Amy Rose at number two. Who is my number one favorite Sonic character? My number one favorite character is Miles Tails Prower. Now, most of my friends who know I like Sonic know that Tails is my favorite character. He's my childhood character. I grew up with Tails. No character in my no Sonic character in my book can ever c compare with Tails to me. Tails is just amazing. I really like how he operates on machinery and stuff like that. And I absolutely love his personality. He is just a real trustworthy friend. He's a person you can look up to. And he is just a person who is just very respectful. And all the things he's did in the series, you really got to give him credit for. Because he works hard to do what he does. Just like Amy and Sonic. That's why I like them as well. But yeah, he might not be the toughest little guy, but he sure can put up a good fight if he can if he tries. But yeah. I know this list didn't ain't as appealing as some, but I did my best. So, yeah, this has been my top 10 favorite Sonic the Hedgehog characters. Stay tuned for my next video, which will be the Sonic characters I hate the most. Most of you will know who number 1 and number 2 and my top 3 most hated are. If not, you can just 
ask me in the comments and I'll write you back and then I'll have a commentary on Danny XX39 coming up. So yes, this is Coangly one and I'll see you on the next list. See ya. Hey guys, Coangly again. And this time I'm doing my top 10 favorite Sonic the Hedgehog characters. I know I should have used this to represent my worst ones from last time, but hey. Again, it's the same list, well, same list, but just different characters. Remember, these are my opinion, people. If you have any other characters you like, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below, or whatever. And please know, if, if some of the characters you hate are on this list, do not, I mean, give your opinion on it, but just don't say, oh, well, this character sucks because of this or this, because... Just, just don't. But, I hope you enjoy the list and what I have to say. So, yeah, these are my top ten favorite Sonic characters. So, enjoy. Let's go on to number ten. On the list, which is first up, uh, number ten, is Espio the Chameleon. Now, out of all the Chaotix, I would have to say Espio is my favorite. Vector, I know I put him last time, but I'm okay with him. I mean, he has sometimes has annoying points, but if you ask me, I would rather Espio be the leader. He's smart, witty, knows exactly what to do in the situation or mission that they're trying to do. But Vector sometimes is actually just clueless about it. And out of all three, he's the one, out of all three of the Chaotix, SBO is the one that has a cool head on his shoulders. He knows what to do at the right moment, and SBO is just an awesome character. I wish he would appear more in some of the games. I'm glad he's appearing in Sonic Generation, because I fucking hate Charmy B, and I'm okay with Vector, but I just feel SBO has more potential than Vector. I mean, SBO has more potential to be the leader in everything. And also, ninjas are cool. So, yeah, that's why SBO's at number 10. And he also has a kick-ass personality. So, yeah, that's SBO at number 10. Number 9 favorite character. Number 9 is E123 Omega. Now, I know Omega doesn't have that big of a fan base, but I absolutely love Omega. Out of the E-Series, he's probably the only one I like, and the only creative robot Eggman's ever built, in my opinion. I mean, the thing I like about Omega is that he's different from the E-Series, and how he doesn't constantly use the same things over again. He has a new thing up his sleeve every time. I loved his voice actor and first appearance in Sonic Heroes. He has a unique style of gameplay, and... He's just a loyal companion to Shadow. Like, he's one of those people that will stick to you with you no matter what. I mean, he's smart, he's clever, he is a trustworthy friend, he's caring. I really love his character design. His character design is really creative and unique. And I love how his, most of his missions involve killing Eggman, because... He probably hates Dr. Eggman as much as I do, because, I'm sorry, the new Eggman sucks ass. So, Omega is awesome, he has a kick-ass design, great personality, and he's just an overall great um, sidekick to Team Dark, and a loyal friend to both Shadow and Rouge the Bat. So, that's why I put Omega on this list. And also, I think he's better than Gamma. So yeah, number 8. A lot of people are going to be disappointed with this, but Silver the Hedgehog. Now, you're going to be disappointed that I put him so low on the list. I do like Silver. I just kind of find him a Gary Stew. And his voice kind of annoys me, which is why he's kind of lower down on this list. But I like Silver because of his telekinetic powers, great personality, great friend. A person, well, you can rely on, but at the same time is really gullible. Like, if he doesn't get tricked or anything, 
He's just someone you can depend on. He's very trustworthy. He's caring. He puts others before his self. So, yeah, and his powers are also great. But because of those two factors, I'm sorry, I just had to put him at number eight. I don't know why. I just don't like the fact that he can be a Gary Stu sometimes. And because his voice kind of annoys me. But Silver's still an awesome character. Number seven. Number seven is kind of low. Blaze the Cat. I know I had her at number five last time, but don't get me wrong. I absolutely adore Blaze the Cat. She is such a badass character. And out of any princess in any video game, she has to be on my top list. Like, unlike others, she defends for herself. Like, she knows what to do in dangerous situations. She's smart. Um, she's independent. And... Because she, and she is awesome, and I love her powers. Um, she can, she like, she kind of reminds me of. I can't think of the name right now, but she just has a great personality, and she just one of those characters that when she first came here, she knew what nothing was and stuff like that. But once she got to knowing everything. You know, you got to learn about her character more and why she felt the way she did, like in Sonic Rush and stuff. And I love how she's fast and stuff, like Sonic. And I love the unique uses of her fire powers. She has the best, the best voice actor out of any of the female characters. She's just so reliable. She doesn't need anyone... You like, anytime she's in a situation, she knows how to face it on her own. Like, she doesn't rely on others to do her problems. When she's stuck in a situation, she faces it on her own, and I love that. Unless she has to do it with a friend. The only reason she's low is because she's kind of a clone of Sonic, and I would prefer to play a Sonic more, but Blaze is awesome. Number six. Number six is Shadow the Hedgehog. Now, people are going to be mad because I put Shadow, but again, this is my opinion. Shadow is awesome. Like, I can't, like, you have to have Shadow on the list. Like, there's just no doubt about it. Shadow is beast. He's awesome. In my point, and he has just, he's probably one of the coolest characters in the Sonic series. And I can see why a lot of people like him. I mean, at, he's tough, but at the same time, you know, he has that side where he cares about the characters. And he knows, like, when he's in a battle, like, he's just one of those people, like, when he's in a battle, he's always up for it. And he's always willing to fight and stuff like that. And I really do like that about Shadow. I don't really have to say that much. But, some points he can be a little bit overrated. But, Shadow's still a cool character overall. Number five. Number five is Rouge the Bat. Now, I know a lot of people really don't like Rouge the Bat because they think she's a slut. Which, really pisses me off because, just because she has boobs doesn't automatically make her a slut. It just means, makes her a bad girl. I mean, just never mind. Now going into why I like her. She's smart and she's really clever. Like, when she's in a situation, like when she's in danger or she knows she's been caught, she uses her smart and witty tactics and actually thinks things out before just go ahead and doing it. Not to mention, once she finds something that's hers, she's willing to fight for it before she has it in her possession. She just don't want to walk off and deal with it. Which is what I love about Rouge. She just has that fighting instinct about her that I like. I love her fighting instinct, how she's willing to fight for what's hers, or she's willing to fight for what she wants. And I'm sure a lot of people do, and I kind of do that a lot, too. Although her voice actor in the past was really annoying, the new one, I think, suits Rouge really well. It suits that personality 
of hers that I like so much, and it just suits her very well. Not to mention, she has pretty good gameplay. She's also a pretty funny character at points. And I just love some of the sarcastic remarks she makes. Ruth the Bat is just clever, funny, and just an all-around great character with great fighting style. And that's why I love Ruth the Bat. Number four. Number four, Sonic the Hedgehog. What's there to say? Sonic the Hedgehog is the main reason you have to make the list. I mean, like, he's pretty much the whole franchise in itself. I mean, he's the reason we got all these great games, even though some of them are bad, and the whole franchise in general. Without him, you wouldn't have any of the games or any of the characters. What else is there to like about Sonic? His personality is awesome. He's always there for his friends. He never lets anyone down, and he's just a person that you can trust until the end. Like, he always keeps his promises. He's a loyal friend. He's fun-loving. He absolutely loves freedom and loves to have fun. And he's just really energetic, which I love an energetic person. He has very fun gameplay, and he's just what I imagine a good character to be. I mean, Sonic is just one of the best characters, and I can't imagine having any, having not having Sonic on anyone's top ten list because he's just such a perfect choice. Though he is generic, and though that. There are characters that I think are better than Sonic. I still think Sonic is worthy of being on the list of top 10 characters. It was really hard for me to choose between him and Shadow since I like both of them so much. Number 3. Number 3 is Knuckles the Echidna. Now, you're going to be wanting to know why I put him higher than Sonic. I honestly think Knuckles has more potential than Sonic, but that's me. In the classic games, Knuckles could honestly be my favorite character if it wasn't for his gullibility. Even if that's even a word, but he just gets tricked by Eggman too much, and I just feel that's kind of dumb. Knowing how dumb Eggman is now, I just feel that Knuckles really needs to step up his game and really stop being tricked by Eggman. Other than that, Egg Knuckles is a kick-ass character I think he is the most badass character in the Sonic series. His design, his creation, and everything is awesome. Like, I love his character design and development. He just has, like, out of any of the voices, I really find his voice really great. Except his newer voice kind of sounds dumb. I like the four kids in the original voice. Knuckles is just an awesome character. I mean, he's really hard-headed and stubborn, but when he's not gullible or stubborn, you know, he's just one of those friends that, you know, that, you know, will always do the right thing at the end, or, you know, who always tries to make the right choices when he can, and stuff like that. And I also hate how he's not been impairing as much in some of the games, like in Sonic Unleashed, it would have been cool to see him in there. And stuff. I'm glad he's appearing in Generations, though. And I hope Knuckles the Echidna keeps being a playable character. Knuckles is just a fun character. He's awesome. I think he's funny. But, yeah, he would be number one tied with my favorite character, who will be up later on on this list, if it wasn't for the fact that he was too gullible. I know that's going to make people mad, I absolutely love Knuckles. It's just there's something about that I just don't like for some reason. But Knuckles the Echidna is a great character. I recommend him on anyone's top ten list. I think he's just the most badass character in the Sonic series. He just has a great personality. He can be loyal and trustworthy when he can be. And I just think he's just an overall great character. And I like his gameplay, too. Number two. I know this is going to tick a lot of people off. Amy Rose. I don't know why. 
I've just always loved Amy Rose ever since she first came out in Sonic CD. She is my favorite Sonic the Hedgehog female, and I don't know, I just love Amy. Like, I'm a huge, huge fan of Amy Rose. Now, a lot of people like the fact that when she gets pissed off, she kind of acts like a bitch. Well, I agree to a certain extent. I'll get to the certain extent in a little bit. I like it when she's mad because I like how her feelings transition trans, um, zis between her being happy or mad because I really think it fits her character really well. Like, you know how she's really moody when she goes from, like, that sweet and loving and adorable character to, you know, just this mean, like, uh, Sonic, you know, that kind of thing. I really like that, and I just think it fits her so well. And Amy is also kind of funny, like... When she has certain expressions, like when she loses or something in a game, I think she just has funny expressions. I just think she's a really funny character. I really like the use of her Pico Pico hammer in games like, in the Sonic Advance games, the first one, I thought she was the best character to play as. Because her gameplay is harder than Sonic Tails and Knuckles, which I like more challenge a lot, so... I would recommend her gameplay for more challenging players in that game. The only thing I don't like is how she hasn't been playable in recent games. I really wish she was playable again. And if she's playable, don't make her gameplay suck as bad as it did in 06. I mean, I love Amy's character. I love her sweet and loving personality. and But she also has those points where she's like... You know, I'm, if I want to be Sonic's girlfriend, I must fight. Like, she has those points where she's like, I must fight and defend for myself and show Sonic that I can be a loyal girlfriend and that I can be loyal but at his side. Like, she tries to do what she can to fight at Sonic's side, not to let him down, and stuff like that. While she is obsessed with Sonic... I managed to ignore most of that and see Amy's real character. The thing I really hate is Sonic Free Riders Amy. Sega, do not bring the Sonic Free Riders Amy. I absolutely hated her in that game. And it's like, what the hell do they do to Amy? Her voice was annoying, and her character is not what I love about Amy. Like, they just made her a complete bitch in the game, and I hated it. But, other than that, Amy Rose is an awesome, awesome character. Her Pico Hammer is awesome. She's a great character. Really good determination. She's brave. She's strong. And I just think she's our overall really great character to the series. And... I just think she is the perfect love interest for Sonic, and I'll pretty much always love Amy Rose. She is just an amazing character. So, yeah, that's why Amy Rose is at number two. She is awesome, and I love her personality. Okay, my number one favorite character in the Sonic um, series is Miles Tails Prowler. And I know I didn't show his name on here, but oh well. If you know me, you know how big of a diehard fan I am of Tails. Tails is awesome. That's all I can say. Um, there are a couple of gripes I have with him, though. Let's go to the gripes, and then we'll go about why I like him. Sonic Unleashed, I found him kind of useless because... Um, like, all he did was carry you from your destination... To show you the character Professor Pickle who had little to nothing to do with the story. And just in late in recent games he just hasn't been useful. Sega's just been ruining him which has really been pissing me off because I love Tails. In the classic games he was like my uh, idol in the classic games. Like Tails is fun loving. He is the most trustworthy person. He is so caring. He's just a friend that you can look up to like a little brother. Like, as your own family. Like, and 
Tails is just really smart and energetic, and he's just fun-loving. I really like how he built. I really like the machine he builds. He just comes up with creative ideas, which really adds to the creativity and style of his characters and stuff. I mean, of course, he's always been a genius. We've seen, like, in the classic games how he builds that helicopter, those planes and stuff, and in the classic games, I just always preferred playing as Tails than Sonic. I mean, he's just one of those characters from my childhood I just can't let go. I mean, Tails is just awesome. He's just my childhood character. I loved him since I was a kid. And, but, I just wish Tails was more playable and more active again. Like, in Sonic Unleashed, his character was kind of lazy. And, in Black Knight, well, in Black Knight, he was alright. It's just, in Colors, I feel he was portrayed a little better. Because, at least without, with Tails, you actually knew what Eggman was planning to do in the game. But Tails is an awesome character. He will always be my favorite character. I love his personality. I love his sense of creativity. And he's just awesome. And I also love that he can fly. I've always been a and I also love that he can fly. So yeah, that that's pretty much sums it up for this list. This has been my list of my top 10 favorite Sonic the Hedgehog characters. Leave yours in the comments. If you have different opinions, post them down below. If you like these characters, that's fine. If you hate them, that's fine. It's your own opinion. But just remember, people, this is solely based on my opinion. This is what I think. So, yeah, I will see you all on my next video. I'm still working on a few things for you, and, yeah, and also, this is just to clear things up with people. So, yeah, I'll see you all. Peace. Hey, everyone, this is Ko Langley One with my top ten favorite Mario characters revised. The other list I felt had problems, so I made another one. Yes, I did say Princess Peach was childish, but she is on this list, and she's one of my favorite characters, and I'll have quite a lot to say about Peach, but now remember, these are my opinion, and I have reasons why certain characters are in order, and yes, Yoshi and Daisy are still the same, Daisy's number two, Yoshi's number one, I do like Luigi more than Mario, but... Anyways, let's just begin the list. And I hate Toad because Toad's useless. But anyways, Dixie Kong. Dixie Kong is lower on the list because this is where she was supposed to be. I do like Dixie. I love her hyper and energetic personality. Um, she's one of my favorite members out of the Kongs. Next to, well, Dixie's my favorite, but I do not like Donkey Kong. On, on Donkey Kong games, I like Donkey Kong. But on Mario, Donkey Kong is just plain stupid. Because, I mean, in Mario Baseball, he uses a boxing glove for a bat. That is stupid. But anyways, I love Dixie Kong. I love her personality. And she's just really a fun character to use. And she's just a good addition. So yeah, that's why Dixie's at number 10. Um... At number 9, we have Diddy Kong. Diddy Kong, as usual, my favorite member out of the Kongs. He has that hyper and energetic personality. Um, and, I don't know, I just love Diddy. He's probably one of my favorite cartoon monkeys of all time. And, he's just re he's really fun to play as in a spinoff game. And, I just enjoy using him. And, yeah, and he's perfect sidekick for Donkey Kong. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, something just inspired me to make a new list, because I really love Peach so much, but, anyway, so let's just go to this next character. Yeah, but Diddy's awesome. Here at number eight, we have King Boo. Now, I'm going to put King Boo and the Boos in the same spot. 
The Boos are the only characters I like on Mario. I mean, not characters, but the only villains. Because every single enemy in Mario, even Bowser, I think is annoying. And Bowser, I think, is the most overrated character. Because people just usually like him because of how he looks. A character's look does not make him good. It's the different characteristics and qualities about him. And Bowser is just really overrated. And I'll get to him when I do my worst. And he's really annoying. And every one of his kids are just annoying, spoiled little brats. But anyways, I love the boos. They're really funny and they're just cool. And I just love them so much. Here at number 7 we have Princess Peach. Yes, I absolutely love Peach. Peach, but I have a lot to say. Yes, she is childish. I hate what they've did to her. In the original Mario games, all the way up until Sunshine, she was always that caring, carefree, like, she was always caring, and she even helped Mario even when she was captured. But I despised her in Mario Sunshine because she was so stupid. I mean, she just stood there and let the bad guy get her when she was like 10 feet away from it. And she got fooled by it because she thought that was Mario. Which was really stupid. But I love Peach so much. When she's playable in a spinoff game... She's a fun character to play as. I did say she was one of the worst. Yes, she is one of the worst characters because, like, in Mario Baseball and Mario Sluggers, she's the only one I cannot make a home run with, but I can with all the others. But Peach, I, lo I don't like how she has that umbrella. I mean, what's the point in that when she uses her dress to float? And Prince Super Princess Peach was a really childish game because she carries an umbrella that talks. That's really childish. But I just hate how they've turned Peach into a whiny how and turned her into a whiny childish um mindless and clueless girl who can't make up her mind. When used to, she used to be smart and think her way out of things. But I do not hate Peach. Why do you think she's on this list? She is one of my favorite characters, and I just hate how they've ruined her so badly. And I'm sorry, but her voice now is really, really annoying. But she's still one of my favorite characters. And I just love how she's so sweet. And and she just don't really help out much anymore. She made a she helped out in Super Paper Mario, which I'm sorry to you all who liked that game, but I thought it was worse than the other two. The Thousand Year Door was the best, and then the original, and then that one was the worst. Because the I just don't like that one, but overall, Peach is a good character. She has been ruined, and I wish they would change her back. And I missed her voice from Super Mario 64, because that was the best voice she ever had. And she is really childish, but I still like her. And... And Mario Tennis on the 64, she was an awesome character. She was like my third out of my choices to use. She was like the fifth best character in that game, or the fourth. But I just want the old Peach back, but yeah, I still like her. I just wish the old one was back, and I think Daisy's much more better. But anyways, here we go into number six, Toadette. Toadette still, I still love Toadette. Toadette is an awesome character. Um, she is much more helpful than Toad. Because in the Thousand Year Door, she actually gave you the hammer and jump upgrades. Which was really helpful. And, I don't know. But, 
But yeah, Toadette is way more helpful than Toad. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put Toad on that last list. It should have been Peach. Because Toad is really useless. And not to mention, he sucks in some of the games. The only game I actually thought he was good in was Sluggers and Mario Kart Wii. But other than that, he's just really useless. But Toadette is awesome, and I absolutely just love Toadette. But, yeah. Here we going on to number five. I moved her high, Rosalina. Like I said, I love Rosalina. She was a great new addition to the Mario franchise. She is an excellent new addition. Um, I hope she's playable in more of the spinoff games. Um, and yeah, Rosalina is just an awesome character, and she always does everything she can to help her people, which are the Lunas, and she's just, um, and she's just really caring. And another thing I forgot to mention about Peacha, or I think her voice is really annoying. But, yeah, I do love Peach. But Rosalina is an awesome character. And I just like her. Stay tuned for part two. You'll see my fourth, third, second, and first. Which you know who second and first are. But, yeah. This is Koangi Want. My top ten Mario characters. Favorite Mario characters revised. I hope you enjoyed. And see y'all. And, just by the way. These are the only characters I like. Because I basically hate all the others. Well, anyway, see y'all. This is Ko Lang Lee Wong, my top ten favorite Mario characters revised part two. Yes, this list, I finally got the list perfect, but I did make a mistake. Peach was supposed to be higher than Rosalina, but I do like Rosalina a little bit more, even though Peach was supposed to be higher. Sorry about that mistake, and... Well, these are the four characters, my other four favorite characters I'm about to announce on this list. I just hope you enjoy the list and just listen to what I have to say and stuff like that. And yeah. And I do, and I'll do my worst. I might make the worst in the three parts because I hate an awfully lot of characters. Uh, Mario, but anyways, let's go. Mario. Who would not put Mario on their favorite character list? Mario's the whole franchise, and he is, Mario is just an awesome character, and he, um, you can't have a Mario game without Mario. Um, he's really good in the spinoff games. He has, he's had many spinoff games. He's really good in them. He's like one of the most athletic players. I like a player who's athletic. Um, he's I love his Italian accent. It's really funny. And he's always there for everyone. He always wants world peace. He never gives in to anything. He'll keep on doing it until he's got the job done. Um, that's what I love about him. And... Just who would not put Mario on her list? But, people, I do have certain reasons for why some of these characters are in certain order. So, I do love Mario, though, overall. I mean, but you got to admit, y'all, we already basically know him and stuff. Um, yeah. And I do, and basically these ten characters I said... And I mean, they are the only ten I like. Because every character and every enemy, except for the boos on Mario, are really annoying. But anyways, Mario is awesome. Let's move on to the other character, Luigi. Yes, I'm sorry if y'all like Lu Mario more than Luigi, but I think Luigi's better. And... I had a hard time deciding where to put Luigi because he is really awesome. And 
I don't know. There's just something about Luigi that I just love. He has been... He is one of the best sidekicks Mario has. He's When Mario needs a friend or something, Luigi's always there. He is very fun-loving, and when he's playable in a spin-off game, he's one of my... That one of my best choices because he's a really fun character. You could say he's somewhat athletic, but he's still cool. And Luigi is funny. I like Lu I like kind of like Luigi's accent better though because Luigi's funny and stuff. But yeah, he's always there with Mario. Or if not, Yoshi or somebody is. Even though Yoshi's his best sidekick, but. Luigi is still awesome, and I really did have a hard time because this list, these were pretty, really hard choices because I hate Elmo. These ten are the only ones I don't hate. Every other character can go just die. The only characters, except for my favorite Paper Mario characters, I hope y'all watch that list. And I'm I'm recommending some of y'all do, but anyways, my favorite female in the Mario series, Princess Daisy. Daisy is awesome. Who does not love Daisy and people? Just because her voice is annoying doesn't make Peach better. I'm not saying everyone's like this, but some of the people who like Peach more than her think Peach is better just because Daisy's voice is annoying. No offense, but I think Peach's voice is way more annoying. Because it's way too light and stuff. But I do love Peach, so I'm just going to let that slide by. But Daisy made her first appearance in Super Mario Land. And I've loved her since then. And yes, her voice is the only thing I hate about her. I wish she would get her voice from Mario Tennis on the 64. Daisy is just awesome. She's one of the best characters to play as in the spin-off games. Like the fourth or fifth best. Um, <clears throat> she is very... I love her hyperactive and energetic... I mean, not hyper, but her energetic and go-getting attitude. Um, she never gets in. Um, she always tries her best. She always tries her best and just loves to have fun. And she's very, very athletic. She's really good at sports. And I love a girl who's athletic. And she's just such a fun character. I honestly would rather her than Paige. If I had to choose, I would choose Daisy over Paige. But Paige is still cool. Why do you think Paige is on this list? But I like Paige, so I'm just going to let that go by. But I love Paige. But I do like Daisy more and stuff. So anyways, my number one favorite Mario character of all time is, you all guessed it, <clears throat> hang on, let me clear my, I had to clear my throat there, is Yoshi. Who does not love Yoshi? Nothing can ever go wrong with Yoshi's around. When Yoshi's around. Um, he, I love his ability to, like, hover in the air. That's really cool. I love how each of the Yoshi colors come in a different variety of colors and abilities. That is very unique. He is, like, my favorite character to play as in the spinoff games. He is one, he's, you could say he's a medium character in the spinoff games. He's really fun. I love his first appearance in Super Mario World. Which was one of the best games I've ever played. Um, I don't know. I, Yoshi is my childhood character, just like Tails from Sonic is. Um, Yoshi is just awesome. And he is the best sidekick Mario's ever had. Um, and I just absolutely love Yoshi. I'm a big fan of Yoshi. And I'm glad he made his appearance in... The only thing I didn't like and I thought was really stupid is that he can't enter ghost houses or castles. I see no point in that. That is really stupid. But other than that, Yoshi is awesome. That's why he's my favorite character. And I love his um, 
keep it going attitude and personality. And he never gives in. He always tries his best. And he's just such a fun character. And I just love Yoshi so much. Well, this has been Koang Lee Won, one of my top ten favorite Mario characters revised. These are the only ten characters I like because the other ones are annoying. Well, stay tuned for my top ten worst Mario characters part two. This is Ko Langley One. I hope you enjoyed this list. And yeah, see y'all.